the last part of this first half of the topic, I suppose, um, is we're going to look at angles between vectors and an axis. Um, so this, again, we've got a physical, a 3D representation of a particular vector. Um, I haven't given you any information about that vector other than the fact I've called it A. And you can see that this is the x-axis. We've got the y-axis, which is the bit that looks like it's kind of going back into the board. And z is going straight up here. And they want you to work out um, the angle between the vector and the x-axis. So here, the way that we can try and work out this angle that we've got down here, we call it theta. And we do a little subscript, x, which means the angle that it makes with the x-axis. It's kind of imagining if that vector was having to like rotate around to go back to the x-axis, what angle that would be. Um, the way that we do that is we look at this diagram and we see that we've actually got a right angle triangle. As soon as we have right angle triangles, we should think of two things, really. We should think of Pythagoras, which we've already been dealing with in this topic. The other thing that we should think of is Sokotoa. Okay? So Sokotoa also is going to pop up here. If I redraw this triangle just to show it looking a little bit more flat, we've got here, along the bottom, is the x coordinate of whatever that position is over there. Okay, So along the bottom is the x coordinate. What's going to be the hypotenuse? A. Good, modulus of a, or the magnitude of a. And then we have the angle here, which is theta x. So actually, what we can see here is we're going to do Sokotoa. And we've got which two sides of the triangle? Which means I'll be using cos. So I know that the cos of theta x is x over modulus a. So if I wanted to find out what theta x is, I would do the inverse cos of x over modulus a. So how could we work out the angle between them? We can use Sokotoa. And triangles. This is a minute topic. This is a tiny, tiny, small topic that I haven't seen be tested yet in the A level. If it is tested, it's it's very, very, very small, which makes me think it probably is something that they'll they'll maybe throw in. So that's all I've got written here. This sort of like uh, this was the working out that told us the thing inside the red box. So the angle between A, which is x, y, z, and the x-axis. It doesn't give you the angle. You obviously have to do the inverse cos of this afterwards. Is x over modulus of a. And I've said similarly for the y and z axes. So if it was for the angle that it makes with the y axis, it would just be the y over the modulus of a. And if it was for the angle that it makes with the z axis, it would just be z over modulus of a. Yeah? From the x change of the z axis, is there a specific angle that is? Between this axis and this axis? Yeah. Yes, 90 degrees. The definition of the x, y, and z axis is that they are all perpendicular to each other. Yes, it just. Oh, it's yeah, it's it's really hard to to draw, but it's actually this is representing 3D space. So you have to imagine that this bit with the x and y is kind of like a flat, like diagonal kind of piece of paper, kind of like that sort of thing, and then z is coming up through the middle of it. Some people can visualize this really clearly, and some people just can't see it at all. It's really hard. I don't know. But it is, because the, the A vector is not on the flat plane x, y. The A vector. Is it alongside the z axis or the y x axis? A? Yeah. No, A no, is. No, the triangle, the triangle itself. The, this bit here, if I was going to draw a triangle in at the end of it, this is where it's going to get with this bit. This triangle is parallel to like this surface over here, the yz plane. OK. If I was going to just do a demonstration of it, like it's like if this is the x-axis, let's do it like this. This is. If z is like here, so like a is just a random 3D vector just like floating in space. It's floating. Yeah. This, is, this a vector here is not on the xy plane. It's not on the yz plane. It's just 
it's fl it's just floating in space. It's just like it's just like if it was in this room, and this is the corner of the room, the a vector is just like it's just like a line. Okay, and we're trying to find out the line between like my arm and like the corner, like one of the the lines. No, it's definitely not resting on one of them. So it is drawn accurately. This is how it should be drawn. Okay. So we're going to just do this one down here super quick. We want to find the angles that this vector makes with each of the positive coordinate axes. So first of all, if I do it with the x-axis, uh, well, I guess before I even do that, I should actually work out what the, uh, the, the modulus of a is, which we know will be 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 1 squared, which is root 14. So with the x-axis, the cos of theta x will be the x coordinate, which is 2, divided by root 14. So theta x will be the inverse cos of that. And we'll probably have this in degrees, I think, so that it has some meaning. So we get 57.7 degrees. The y-axis, what needs to be on the top for the y-axis? So it's just minus 3 over root 14. Do the inverse cos of that. And we get 143.3 degrees. So if it's 143.3 degrees, you have to try and think about what that might mean if it's because it's greater than 90. Because this angle is greater than 90, it's obtuse, and we're talking about the angle that it makes with the positive y-axis. So actually, it's kind of hard to imagine this, but the vector is kind of on the other side. It's actually making an angle with the negative y-axis of 180 minus that, which is 36.7 degrees. So it's actually kind of, it's actually like leaning more towards the negative y-axis than it is towards the positive y-axis because of the fact that the angle is 143 degrees. If it was 90 degrees, it would actually be kind of leaning neither towards the positive y-axis nor towards the negative y-axis. It would just be like in between them. It's really, really hard to visualize this stuff. Let's just finish off and do the z-axis. So the cos of theta little z would be minus 1 over root 14. So theta z is 105.5 degrees. I've done all of those to just one decimal place. So this gives you a bit of a sense of where it's landed, this vector. It's on 57 degrees to the x-axis. It's 143 degrees to the positive y-axis, so it's actually kind of more on the negative y-axis. And it's 105 degrees to the positive z-axis, so it's actually kind of pointing downwards. It's kind of pointing down away from y, the positive y, away from the positive z, and kind of towards x. So it's kind of probably coming over in this direction, which makes sense because it's two along in the x-direction, three back in the y direction and one down in the z direction. It's kind of pointing downwards. And you can see that from the instructions here. Two in the x, minus three in the j, in the y, sorry, and minus one in the z. But you're not expected to visualize these things, OK? It's just about if you can use this formula and you can remember this. This is an added thing to have to put into your memories and your, your revision. Everyone got that written down? OK, nearly done for the stuff from today. We're just going to do these two examples. Ishtak, you got a question? No? Hamza? Shh. You're not even in this class, so why are you talking? <laughs> OK, so we're now just going to use some of these possible ideas that we've got here. Um, the top one isn't related to what we've just done. The second one is related to it. So just see if we can remember those formula when we get to it. The points A and B have position vectors this and this relative to a fixed origin O, find AB and show that OAB is isosceles. OK, so I might do a little sketch of this to think about what's happening here. 
it says um, show that triangle OAB is isosceles. So A, B, and O, that's the thing that I'm interested in to try and show if it's isosceles. O to A is the vector A. O to B is the vector B. They've asked us to find out the vector AB. So I'm going to find out the vector AB, which is by doing B minus A. And B minus A is this one minus this one. So that's 3, 4, minus 1, minus this one, which is minus 4, minus 2, minus 7. Minus 1, 2, minus 8. So I now know what this is. I know what this is. And I know what this is. What do you think I can do if I want to find out anything about this triangle? What do you I could find the angle, but finding the angles is actually something that pushes it more into kind of a further math territory. What else can I do if I'm trying to show this? Tell me about this. How many sides? This means that two sides are equal, what word can I use? Equal length, or I'm going to use this. Two sides are equal magnitude, or yeah, I'm going to put length as well. So all I need to do is find the magnitude of AB, which is going to be the Pythagoras of this, 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 8 squared, that's 64, plus 4 is 68, plus 1 is root 69. Then I'm also going to find out the magnitude of this side of the triangle, which is just going to be root 4 squared plus 2 squared plus 7 squared, so that's 16 plus 4 that's also root 69. Why do you think I also need to check out B? Just to, make sure it's not equilateral. to make sure it's not equilateral, because it could be equilateral. So I'm going to very quickly show what the root B is. That's going to be 3 squared, 4 squared, and 1 squared. So that's 26, I think. And we can say, because AB is equal to O a because this is this is the length OA the triangle OAB is isosceles they may ask you some questions which could include the sine rule or the cosine rule all you need to do first is find out the sides of the triangle, and then maybe you can do some things from there. They might even use half A, B, sine C. Just be prepared for that. So um, find the angle that the vector this makes with the x-axis. Then, by similarly considering the angle that B makes with the x-axis, determine the area OAB, where OA is A and OB is B. So we're going to have to draw a diagram. Let's start off by working out the angle that this makes with the x-axis and the angle that this makes with the x-axis. So if A is 2, 1, 1, the modulus of A is the square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is 4, 5, 6, which is root 6. So the angle that it makes with the x-axis, what does the formula say we have to do? Good, so the x is 2, the magnitude is root 6, so the angle that it will make is 2 over root 6, and then we're going to do the inverse cos of that, so the angle it makes is 35.26 degrees. I'm going to do the same process with b, which is 1, 3, 2. So the modulus of b, or the magnitude of b, 1 squared plus 3 squared plus 2 squared. That's 9, 10, 14, root 14. So now we're going to work out the angle that this one makes, which is going to be the x bit is 1. So it's 1 over root 14, inverse cos of that. And we get 74. Point uh, five zero degrees. That's rounded to two two decimal places. 
So we've done the beginning bits that the question has asked for us to do. We now need to go like a stage further and see what it actually wants us to do. It says determine the area of OAB. So we're going to draw a diagram. Now I can't draw a 3D diagram, so I'm going to draw a 2D diagram. We know that the angle that A makes is smaller than the angle that B makes with the x-axis. So I'm going to put B up here. And I'm going to say that the angle is 74.5 degrees. And I know that the angle that A makes, I'm going to do it in a different color, is less. The angle that it makes is 35.26 degrees. How could I find out the area of the triangle OAB? No, I, I know this angle here, yeah? Is that what you were going to say, Mr. Kira? Yeah, I know that it's 70, 70, 70, 75, Good. The red angle is 74.5 take away 35.26. That might be useful. Which is 39.24 rounded. Let's just leave it as 39.2 degrees. Now, this is where you want to just do one final diagram to think about what's happening here. We've got a triangle that looks like this. The angle is 39.2 degrees. The length, what's the length between O and A? Good, root 6. What's the length between O and B? Good. So the area of this triangle, let's just make a little bit more space on my board here. So the area using a half a, b, sine c is a half root 6, root 14, sine of 39.2 degrees. Which is, I hope, a reasonable answer. We've got 2.8. 898, which is 2.90 units squared, and that's to two decimal places. OK. Any questions on this? Just now we're going to put this into a bit of practice. So I'll pause that. <coughs>